What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? My earliest memory of being afraid was when I was four years old and my mother took me to our big community swimming pool for swimming lessons. Now, up until that time, the only swimming pool I had ever seen was the little inflatable one in my backyard. Well, the instructor spent most of that first lesson trying to convince four-year-old me to put my face in the water. I refused. I'd never done it before. I was scared. I was scared of the unknown, so I just clung to the side of that pool in a panic. Well, the instructor was very patient with me, and she kept telling me, just take a big breath and put your face in the water. She demonstrated it over and over again until finally, I just took a big breath and I did it. And I did it again, and I did it again. And I wasn't afraid anymore. It wasn't unknown to me. 10 years later, I was on my high school swim team, so clearly I had mastered that face in the water thing. However, the first time the swim meet came up, I got up on the starting block, and I looked around, and I saw all these people, and this wave of fear just washed over me. Oh my gosh, I've never done this before. It sounds odd, but I was 14 years old, and I had never been in a competition before. Well, the starting buzzer went off, I dove in the water, I swam to the end of my lane, and I was coming back when I realized I wasn't getting any air. I couldn't breathe. I was surely going to die. So I grabbed onto the side of that pool with, in a panic. You see my pattern here? I saw Mr. James, my coach, come strolling over. And he got up to the edge of the pool and he reached down and he grabbed me by my wrists and just pulled me up out of the water. You're hyperventilating, he said, and he calmly sat me down on the bench. I wasn't going to die after all. Well, Coach James had me compete again, and again, and again. And while I never got to be very fast, I did finish my races, and he never had to pull me out of the water again. At the end of the season, they had an awards banquet, and I was presented with a medal. Not for speed or time or because I had earned a lot of points for my team, but because I finished the season without hyperventilating again. <laughs> I was the most improved swimmer on that team. And that's kind of a lame award compared to the other ones that were handed out that night. But it said I stuck with it. I pushed through the fear, and I just did it. And that's a pivotal lesson to learn when you're 14 years old. You see, it's easy to convince ourselves that there's a lot to be afraid of, especially when there's a lot we don't know. You all have a lot of firsts ahead of you. First day of college, first day on a new job, that first time you leave home. Don't let fear stop you. Just take a deep breath and put your face in the water. A long, long time ago, President Franklin Roosevelt gave this famous speech, and in it he made this phrase. It's become so well known. He said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, right? He said this to the nation that was in the grip of a horrible depression, a depression that was going to last a decade. There is nothing to fear but fear itself. Because fear can paralyze us. Ironically, the man that made that phrase so famous was himself paralyzed. The nation didn't know 
that its great leader was bound to a wheelchair, unable to move his legs. They didn't know that its president had to be lifted out of that wheelchair every night and put into his bed. And they didn't know that to him, the thought of being trapped in a building should it catch fire and being helpless propelled him to repeatedly practice throwing himself on the floor and dragging the weight of his body with just his arms. He didn't let fear paralyze him. You see, Mr. Roosevelt knew that fear is just an emotion. It's an emotion that we attach to a thought. The thought is, I don't know how to do that. Or, I haven't done that before. Or, if I do that, I might fail. The emotion that we attach to that thought is what makes it feel so powerful and so overwhelming. But fear is just an emotion. It's not anything solid or tangible like a locked door that you can't get through. If fear feels like a locked door to you, know that the lock is on the inside. You can turn it and walk through it and create that memory for yourself that says, I can do this. I've done it before. And the next time you're afraid, you can unlock it and walk through and go, I can do this. I've done it before. When you're in high school, you have 70, 80 years of unknown in front of you. You're going to figure it out. Most of us do. But do you know you have coaches all around you? Not swim coaches, but life coaches. There's coaches everywhere, and these are just people who have already done what you're trying to do. They know what is unknown to you. Talk to them. They're everywhere. And they're not necessarily wearing a ball cap or they have a whistle around their neck. You know who makes an awesome coach? Calm, highly experienced, unflappable. Think of the people you know, those people in your world who maybe walk a little slower. They have gray hair or no hair. And they probably wear glasses. They're a little baffled by smartphones. But they've lived through what scares them. And you. Talk to them. Ask them, what were you afraid of when you were my age? They will give you wonderful perspective. Talk to them. Just don't text them. <laughs> when I was in my 20s, I spent a long afternoon with a woman named Edna. Edna was 60 years older than me, and I was this brand new mommy. And I was as full of fear and anxiety about the world I had brought my sweet little baby into. How could I possibly protect him from all of that? Edna had raised her children during a great world war. So she understood how I felt. And we spent hours talking that afternoon about motherhood and about life. And when we got to the end of our conversation, I asked her, I said, what do you think is the greatest invention, the most ach biggest achievement that mankind has accomplished uh, in your lifetime? Well, I thought she'd say something like, well, oh, computers or putting a man on the moon. But you know what she said? She said, Putting the bathroom inside the house was a good idea. <laughs> well, that made me laugh, and it gave me a huge amount of perspective. You all have perspective, too. Not as much as Edna, but you can share your playbook with middle schoolers and elementary school students. Think about 
what is it you know now as a high school student that you wish you would have known when you were in eighth grade or fourth grade? Talk to them. Be that graduate who comes back and tells high school students how you navigated that first year of college and how what you learned here helped prepare you for that job and that career. Share your story, share your experience, share how pushing through that fear helped you. Because that's the gift of fear. Once you walk through it, you can plant your feet and you can reach out to somebody and you can say, I've walked through that. I know what that feels like. You can do it. I'm here now because 113 years ago, a young woman named Pauline got on a ship with two little babies and came to this country. Her youngest baby was my grandfather. Now, Pauline was only a few years older than you are now, and she didn't speak any English. She could not read or write in her own language, and she was leaving everything that was familiar to her behind her forever. The fear of the unknown must have been overwhelming for her, but she came anyway. She came anyway because as big as fear feels, possibility is greater. Possibility is greater. Now, I've never done anything as bold as Pauline, but in the years since I quit clinging to the sides of swimming pools, I've been through a few things. I left a job I was really good at after 13 years because I wanted to work in education. 12 years after that, I was honored as Teacher of the Year. I went back to school when I was in my 40s. If you think having your parents see you graduate is a proud moment, imagine having your children there. I've gotten on a plane all by myself and flown to the other side of the planet twice because I wanted to see my son and I wanted to meet my granddaughter. I had the opportunity a couple of years ago to go back and visit my old high school. I was surprised as I was walking around because the campus really had not changed a whole lot. The trees were a whole lot bigger in the quad where I used to eat my lunch every day. There were now computers in my old typing class. And that swimming pool that Coach James pulled me out of was still there. As I was walking around kind of remembering different things, it occurred to me that when I was there as a high school student, I never would have imagined coming back decades later and walking around that campus. I was now full on in my career, not only a mother, but a grandmother. If high school me could see me now, what would she think? Would she be impressed? If I could talk to her, what would I tell her? Would I tell her about the hard stuff that was ahead of her? The painful stuff? Probably not. But I would tell her not to be so afraid. There are great things on the other side of fear. Thank you. <laughs>